Welcome to the central lobby of the Houses of Parliament. The new law will wipe out the convictions of hundreds of sub-postmasters who were wrongly convicted of stealing from the post office. Rishi Sunak told MPs that the scandal caused by the faulty Horizon IT system is one of the greatest miscarriages of justice in the nation's history. The government acknowledged it is controversial to use Parliament to override the verdicts of courts in England and Wales, but said it was necessary because it was taking far too long to resolve cases individually. Here's our political editor, Gary Gibbon. They were convicted by the courts, but will be cleared en masse by MPs. The principle of justice through the courts suspended because the sub-postmasters have been through too much already. I was served one and a half years sitting in the prison, counting the bars. So I know how I felt. But nobody can put the, that one and a half years back into my life. And those period, my children, my wife, and everybody suffered because of, I was incarcerated. Sanapati Narendran says the post office told him he must confess to stealing £275,000 or his wife could also go to prison. It's too little too late after so many years but hope they will stand it and clear our name as soon as possible because it's been hanging on for a quite a long time. It's nearly two decades now. The government said under the proposed new law, sub-postmasters convicted of fraud could be cleared before the end of the year. Today I can announce that we will introduce new primary legislation to make sure that those convicted as a result of the Horizon scandal are swiftly exonerated and compensated. The fancy new computer system that they've spent an arm and a leg on is faulty. The reaction to ITV's drama series has triggered blanket exonerations without precedent. Alongside that, the government announced minimum compensation, 600,000 for those convicted, 75,000 for those that took the post office to court. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The government minister acknowledged this approach might mean a few guilty people benefit. I cannot tell the House that all of those prosecuted were indeed innocent, or even that it was 90 per cent or 80 or 70. Without retrying every case, we cannot know. Historical convictions for homosexual offences were quashed by Parliament several years ago, but a blanket acquittal for current offences is without precedent. The risk is, is it is Parliament taking over from the courts the resolution of judicial matters. And if, for example, Parliament were to decide to do the same thing with uh, their former colleagues who were sentenced to imprisonment uh, for the expenses scandal, it would be a public outcry because the rule of law in this country would effectively be seen to have come to an end. You feel whenever a legal process is being overturned, there should be another legal process. Anything else leaves you queasy? Yes, it does. The sub-postmaster is personally responsible. The government plan spares victims of the post office scandal the strain of going into a courtroom again, though there could be an assessment process if they want compensation above the basic offer. If you've been fighting for many, many years and you're worn through, or you've, you've died, or you've, you're, you've, you've just not been able to, to carry through, you've become ill, you've become mentally un, uncapable of, of carrying on, then, of course, you're going to be forced or coerced into taking a, a lightweight settlement, which is, as I say, it's probably not going to touch a fraction of the losses which these people have, have, have undertaken. Probably they want to win the next election. That's what he's doing. I don't know what is behind this all. But at least if they can do something, it's better for the rest of the postmasters who is alive at the moment. Because 35 or 40 people already been dead and buried without even they, their conviction being quashed. So, so it's so sad. One MP said talks with ministers suggested there was a lot of work still to be done on the plans and not much under the bonnet. Number 10 promised the new law would be passed before the end of the year. Well, as we've just heard, the decision to quash all Horizon scandal convictions is unprecedented. So when I spoke to the Post Office Minister, Kevin Hollingrake, a short time ago, I asked him why his team has decided to take this route to solving the problem. Well, the first thing to say is we're keen for as many people affected by the Post Office Horizon scandal to get compensation as quickly as possible and to clear their names. The option we chose, which we think is the best option to do those things rapidly, is to do a single piece of legislation to overturn all convictions that relate to the Post Office Horizon scandal. 
it is a very significant step because it does mean we are potentially interfering <coughs> with a judicial process. Yeah, so well, I mean, you are, you are interfering <coughs> with, with, with justice, aren't you, which is supposed to be yes, independent. I are. mean, does, does that worry you? I mean, not, of course. not because this case is controversial, but because it's a very dangerous precedent, isn't it, for Parliament to just set aside? Sure. It is something we wouldn't do lately, it's fair to say, and pretty unprecedented. But I think the scale of the problem, the depth of the problem, says the impact on people's lives. People, even the legal fraternity, can see why we need to do this, and I do think it's the right thing. I mean, you've been dealing with this intensively for a few weeks now. Um, are, are you, you know, frankly appalled at how this has been handled by your predecessors, whoever they are? And, but, and from <coughs> different parties. Well, to be clear, I've been dealing with this for, for years because on the back benches we were talking about these issues. I think there's lots of good work been done and um, by my predecessors, my immediate predecessors, Paul, yeah. Paul Scully. For the last 15 months I've been in post. It's been my number one priority through all that time. But why there did you many... do this and not him is, is the point, I suppose. Well, it's because of the election, there, isn't it? Not at all. There are things you learn. There, there's a learning experience here and lots of things we expected to happen. For example, overturning the convictions. When the first convictions were overturned, we thought many other people would come forward straight away. We were surprised that hadn't happened. And even some people coming forward hadn't had their convictions overturned. Late last year, we started looking at what we might do to mean that it's easier to overturn convictions. Yeah. I, I'm not saying the dramatization, which is so powerful, didn't play a part. Of course it yeah. did, because whatever people think, politicians react to public, the public pressure and public outrage. And we are outraged, as well as the public, about this. And many people, it really resonated with people. So it gave us a bit of a platform to push this forward more quickly. So the mass overturning of the convictions, that only came about because of that ITV drama, didn't it? I don't, in truth. I, I, no, that's not true. It's something we were, we're looking at over the last few months, even before the drama was aired. So that's not true. And the other thing we want to do, we want people to come forward. There's been a nervousness around uh, some of the victims to come forward because they don't want to relive it. We want those people to come forward. We want them to know it'll be the convictions will be overturned without having, them having to do anything. And the process for getting compensation is much, more, much swifter now. People with an overturned convictions uh, can take one of two routes. They can go a full assessment route, which is, which is quite an um, uh, intensive process and it is quite complex or they can take a fixed sum and there's no requirement to compile a claim of £600,000. And do you think those numbers, the £600,000 and also the 75000 up front that you're offering people, is enough? I mean, how have you come to that number? You know, I mean, it sounds like a lot of money, £600,000, but if you've been ruined, if you've lost your pension, if you've lost yeah. your home, if your life has been sure. ruined, if you've been to prison, you know, sure. is, is that what your life is worth? No, not at all. So if people think their claims are worth more than that, then they can go through the full assessment process. We're just see, saying it's, for some people, they think that it's a better route. Some people have died waiting for compensation. We don't want that to happen. We want to get this compensation out the door as quickly as possible. Does it make you think there are probably <laughs> other scandals, perhaps not quite as big, I but think, there might be other things that why people are sitting at home going, well, what about me? I think one of the le le lessons to learn from this is we have a system where anybody can take forward a private prosecution, a private criminal prosecution. And that's the device by which the post office used, used, which it used to prosecute these cases. The um, Lord Chancellor, the Justice Secretary, is looking at that, whether that's a right we should have across our economy or whether that right should, be, um, should come with conditions or not be there at all. And so what do you say to Dominic Grieve, who has got concerns, and others, who say, look, you know, What's to stop politicians one day down the road changing the law to change convictions or to, you know, to do it the other way around? Well, this is, it's right to say this is an exceptional measure, not one that I've ever known as, as utilised before, but it's also exceptional circumstances. Everybody can see that. We're very keen to make it clear why we're using it in this particular case or these cases. So I understand the concern. Of course, we've, we've engaged with um, lots of other uh, uh, um, people from a legal background on our benches and uh, within the legal community about this. But I think most people accept that on balance, it is the right thing to do. And that would be my message to Dominic Grieve as well. Kevin Holloway, thank you very much. Thank you.
Well, Jo Hamilton was a sub-postmistress who was falsely accused of stealing £36,000 from the village post office that she ran in Hampshire. She was one of the leading characters portrayed in the ITV drama series that has prompted today's announcement. Verizon Helpline. Thank you for waiting. Hello, how can I help? Oh, hi. Uh, it's Jo Hamilton here from South Warnborough. I'm trying to produce this week's cash account. And what's the problem? I know it's probably me because I'm really rubbish with technology, but I've declared my cash, I've declared my stock, I've done it all three times and I still can't get it to balance. And the real Joe Hamilton joins us live now. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, Joe. How do you feel about this new settlement by the government? <laughs> well, I, I'd like to see the detail of it really before I comment. I mean, I guess it's, it's good news that it speeds things up because ours personally took a long time. But the travesty of all of this is that the, um, the group that actually took the post office on, as you'll see in the drama, um, my, my story started some 20 years ago. Um, we have been battling since then to get this um, taken on board. We formed a group litigation in 2015 and nine years on, the group that actually enabled all of this to happen have not been properly compensated. And I think it's a travesty that they haven't been sorted out by now. Um, you know, they've offered 75,000, but personally, the post office actually robbed me of 60,000 um, pounds. And I know there are people in the group that gave them an awful lot more than that. So 75,000 pounds doesn't touch the sides. And the impact on your life of having to deal with that 60,000 pounds shortfall and the prosecution. I mean, how do you put a value on that? Well, I know I've been through the, the um, I'm part in the compensation process and I've, um, so I've been taken out of the group that was the original 555 and I've been enabled to go through the criminal compensation pot, which is like the overturned conviction scheme because there's so many schemes. Um, but the group themselves need proper financial redress, not £75,000. You know, I, I just find the whole thing staggering and I'm so angry because the group are literally dying. People's mental health is absolutely shot to bits. Every time you think, oh, there's an announcement, you know, you think they might have some kind of sympathy with us. I mean, how much does it take? Thank goodness we've had the drama and it's brought it to the fore. But really, they should hang their heads in shame. I mean, £75,000 is, is a start, uh, but as the minister admitted, the process is complicated for everybody seeking compensation. I mean, what you're hearing today is the prime minister and ministers saying a lot of good work has been done, they're now doing what needs to be done, that this was exceptional. I mean, do you feel they deserve any credit or should they still be hanging their heads in shame? No, the, the, the group litigation, we, we beat them in the High Court in November 2019. It's now 2024. The deadline is August this year, which they've extended to next year now. You know, so how many years do people have to wait for money? It's just wrong. And I think this is only happening because of the drama and it's an election year. I think the two combined have given us a bit of power at long last. So it's not over, is the point, is it? I mean, the, the government are hoping that this announcement tonight draws a line under it and everybody goes, well, that's it, they've solved the problem. <laughs> what you're saying is they haven't. No, they haven't solved the problem at all. The group from the group litigation order still need proper, proper compensation. And I don't mean just giving them their money back and patting them on the head. I mean proper financial redress for what they've suffered. And they will have more deaths on their hands if they're not careful. And people are literally falling apart. So I'd like them to take that on board because this is not right. Joe Hamilton, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Kathy. Thanks, Krish. Well, the Prime Minister has said he will try to help those fighting for justice in Northern Ireland and Scotland. Our Scotland correspondent, Catherine Sampson, has been finding out what life has been like for those wrongly accused north of the border. And she joins us now from Clackmannanshire. Catherine. Yes, Cathy, look, this scandal is now expected to be affecting up to 100 people in Scotland. Many, of course, in more remote and rural communities like 
this one. Now, there are differences here. In Scotland, the post office didn't bring private prosecutions. It was the Crown Office, Scotland's prosecution service. And work to tackle miscarriages of justice is at an earlier stage here. So far in Scotland, there have been only two wrongful convictions overturned. Four people are still battling to try and clear their names. One of those people is Rab Thompson. Now, he was convicted of embezzlement. He's been fighting this now for two decades. It's had a horrendous impact on him and his family. And a warning, my interview with him contains some distressing details. You've been to some pretty dark places Oh, with definitely, yeah. And, well, I did try to commit suicide. I had it all set up. I come home and I said to my wife, I says, I can't keep up with this, Sue. I said, I've, I've had enough. I says, I'm going to finish it. And she says, no, you're no, no, you're no. I says, I am, Sue. I says, I can't keep with this. I says, everywhere I go, I feel that people were talking about me. I says, they might not be, but it's in my system that there's people talking about me. I says, and I keep hearing names and whatnot. I says, so it's, I'm just going to go. And she just, Tain main, no, she tain over to Falkirk Hospital, eh? and I was go, I got kept in for a night in there, eh? and eh, to obviously check my medication and see if I was okay and that. Eh? But it's there've been two or three times lately. I'm thinking about it again. Don't get me wrong. I, I had to phone the doctor this morning to get stronger tablets because it is just all oh, the pressure. Everything's coming to me at the moment. Eh? It's it's coming from all angles. It's moving too quick. Because before, you have seen it occasionally on the telly or a paper or anything, but now, as soon as you switch a telly on, a radio on, it's there, it's right in there. Do you think it's been harder then for people affected by this in Scotland than in England? Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. That in Scotland, as I say, we've been the sleeping giants. We've, we've been lying that low for so long, and because obviously what's went down in England and the, through, through the programme the other night there, we're... We are starting to waking up. Hopefully in Scotland that we start getting bigger publicity for it because well, I've tried to get in touch with other sub postmasters who's involved and no one will no one will speak to me. So I don't know if they're waiting to see if they get their name cleared or they're just no want any no want any press publicity, but it would be nice to get to speak to them, eh? Like what happened in the, the documentary or drama. They all sat around in the wee village hall. Let's tell each other our stories here, eh? We had that announcement from the Prime Minister today. Yeah. I mean, we're waiting to hear what the Scottish Government are going to do. You, I assume you think they need to follow suit now in Scotland as quickly as possible to do what he's done? So it would have been nice for up in Scotland to say, right, we will eh, over, overrule it and give the sub-postmasters their, their freedom again, but we're still waiting on an answer. Is this about money and compensation for you? No, no. It's for me to get... So I can walk out that door and people... All right, Rab, how's it going today? Instead of people talking about me... Obviously, they're talking about me at the moment because it's on the telly, papers and whatnot, but I would rather go back to the way I used to be. I used to be a bit fun, go, happy, lucky chap. Now... I do, I do struggle to talk to people at times. If you had the First Minister in the room with you tonight, what would you say to him? Why is it taking so long? Why did you not look into it when the Fisitu uh, admitted that there was a, a problem with a computer? It's ridiculous that a programme has had to highlight what they've done to our people. Our people have been begging for... Uh, help and no one's no one's listening to us well rab's case to try and clear his name is due to come to court at the end of this month now in the last few hours uh, scotland's first minister hamza youssef has confirmed he has written to the prime minister rishi sunak he says in this unique circumstances he wants to work with the uk government so scotland can become part of a UK-wide approach. Now, this could be complicated. It might involve the Scottish Parliament passing a motion which grants consent for Westminster to legislate on a devolved issue. Now, as you heard, Rab believes Scotland is behind on this. He wants to know why. So it's a question that was put to the First Minister earlier.
I don't think that is the case. Of course, the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission has for a number of years been examining uh, uh, the cases uh, uh, that, that uh, have been impacted and affected, in fact, proactively written out to, I think, about 80 uh, individuals in Scotland that have been affected. But look, I think it's a very fair question uh, from the individual uh, involved here. What I can give him and others assurances of is that uh, when there is a pardon, it will hopefully apply, and certainly I'm willing to work with the UK government to make sure it applies UK-wide. No time scales low for anyone involved in this in Scotland tonight. I think we can expect to hear much more about this issue at First Minister's Questions tomorrow. Catherine, thanks very much. And if you have been affected by any of the issues in that report, you can seek help by going to channel4.com support.